Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Bob Martin and I'm with the Imagine America Foundation. Joining me on today's session of Imagine America Radio is my foundation colleague, Lee Doubleday. Lee and I are extremely excited about today's topic, Computer Science and Information Technology Careers, sponsored by Newmont College of Computer Science. Since 2003, Newmont College of Computer Science has been the training ground for modern day tech heroes to hone their analytical, creative, and coding skills to create the software that will change the world. Their students earn industry proven degrees focused on computer science while developing a portfolio of real world experience through project based learning. Newmont College of Computer Science is located in Salt Lake City, Utah and is accredited by the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges, ACCSC. Newmont is also a brand new partner of the Imagine America Foundation Scholarship and Award Programs. Your students can now apply for Imagine America scholarships to attend Newmont College of Computer Science. Without taking valuable time for our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation to our website, www.imagine.com america.org Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in computer scientists. Computer science is one of the fastest growing career fields in our country today. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation again is Newmont College of Computer Science and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming, tech, the looming computer science shortage and how Newmont is helping meet this need is Ryan Cox. Ryan is the Interim Vice President of Academic Operations at Newmont College of Computer Science. But before turning the program over to Ryan, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, I will then present any questions offered by the participants and we'll address as many questions as possible and provide written responses and follow-up emails necessary. We will have a hard close at 2.30 p.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Ryan Cox. Ryan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lee and Bob. Everyone else, thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to take a few minutes to talk to you a little bit about computer science, the demand in the industry, uh, and the way that we hope Newmont is helping to meet that demand. I wanna talk about three topics over the course of our time together. What is computer science? Why someone might pursue a career in computer science? And then how Newmont helps enable a very successful career in computer science. So let me start with what is computer science? Even though we hear a lot about computer science on the news, uh, often in the form of a security breach or, or other types of uh, computer science related information, it can be really difficult to define. For example, if you jump on the internet and look up a definition of computer science, you might find something like this one that's on Wikipedia. The scientific and practical approach to computation and its application. That's maybe helpful, maybe not, maybe a lot of wording. There's also this, the systematic study of the feasibility, structure, expression, and mechanization of the, method, of the methodological process or algorithms that underline the acquisition, processing, storage, communication of, and access to information. Boy, I even had a tough time getting some of the wording out there. As you can see from that definition, not only is it verbose, it may not give us the most insight into what computer science actually is, and it certainly doesn't build enthusiasm for the industry. As you can see in the examples there in those images, Computer science is really a lot more than those definitions, even if we were to take the time to decode and understand each of the words in the definitions. There's so much more, as far as Newman is concerned, to computer science. So what is it really? What does it mean in our lives and in the lives of our students? Computer science is actually 
pretty all encompassing. It's everywhere. It's not just in our computers and in our mobile devices. It's increasingly becoming in our lives in the form of, uh, it's invading our watches and our, our glasses that we wear. Uh, it's invading our homes in terms of smart homes. And it's also um, becoming embedded in our appliances, even in our households. It's all over the place. When we talk about computer science from our perspective, one of the first things that's important for me to help people understand about computer science is that it requires a degree of creativity. In fact, it's a highly creative pursuit. I have a teenage daughter who participates in ballet and uh, her name is Leah. She really loves it. She's very creative. She thinks of herself as a very creative person. And if I asked her, what she thought some of the most creative pursuits that someone could seek as a career might be, she would probably answer with things like musician, uh, oil painter, sculptor, some type of artist. Uh, certainly she would mention ballerina because that's her love, it's near and dear to her heart. I really don't believe, even, even with me as her dad repeating this in her ear, I really don't believe that she would mention computer science as a highly creative pursuit, but it actually is. If you think about the process of creation that, for example, an artist, maybe a sculptor might go through in order to create a piece of art, an end product, they start with a vision in their mind, and then that vision has to be translated through their skills and their medium into some sort of a finished product, a piece of art that everyone can see and, and use and understand the vision of the original artist. Computer science requires creativity to flow through the exact same process. A software developer, which is one type of a computer science, as an example, needs to have a vision of the software they're trying to produce in their head. And then they need to be able to use their tools and the medium available to them, probably some kind of programming language, to translate that vision into something that people can see and touch and use to benefit their lives. In addition to being a creative pursuit, computer science, and this one's maybe not as surprising, is a problem-solving pursuit. Now, maybe the misperception sometimes about computer science is that the problem-solving is mostly rooted in mathematics, as this image suggests, or science, or business. And that is true. Those problems are often rooted in those fields. However, in addition to that, computer science is in all kinds of other industries. And students, we find, who have a passion for something specific in their lives often can make a career out of the fusion of their computer science skills that they gain at Newmont and their passion that's outside of computer science, or at least traditionally thought of as outside of computer science. One example that comes to mind right now is a couple of students who recently graduated from Newmont who really enjoyed computer science and technology, but also had a very big interest in farming because of their family backgrounds. And they wound up applying their software development computer science skills to some dairy farms in the area to help control milk production. It's also maybe notable in my opinion to mention uh, another aspect of computer science or maybe, maybe an impression of computer science. And it starts for me with a quote by this gentleman, Gabe Newell, who's the founder of a software company called Valve Software that creates uh, some, some um, games, computer games that you may have heard of, Half-Life, Team Fortress, Portal, Left 4 Dead, some others that you may or may not be familiar with. Either way, uh, Gabe's an influential guy in computer science, and he said, the programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You're going to look like you have magic powers compared to everyone else. And I think there's some truth to that. I've seen that in my own life, whether that's me developing the software in my past experience in industry, or whether that's me watching someone else create some vision that's been put into their mind by a customer or a manager, or just a need that they're aware of. Sometimes the bringing of that to life in a new mobile application or uh, intelligent glasses or whatever um, almost seems magical. It almost seems like wizardry. And so in that aspect, I think, uh, you know, maybe there's something to what Gabe is saying. So that's, for me, that's the idea of computer science and what it encompasses that's most important to me, the creativity, the problem solving, and almost the magic of it, of creating something uh, that just surprises and wows people. Um, 
I'll, in fact, I'll just pause on that for one more second and mention to you a recent project I saw from a Newmont student that demonstrates sort of that fusion of creativity and problem solving and then the student's own interest in something outside of technology. There was a student here at Newmont, very bright student who enjoyed technology but also really loved karate. And they found a way in their capstone project near the end of their tenure at Newmont to bring those two things together in their final capstone project and created a virtual, excuse me, an augmented reality simulator that taught people karate and analyzed their punches and their kicks and their blocks, the moves that they were making, and then helped them make slight improvements, coached them on improving. Just one more example of something that kind of seems magical uh, and that intersects two different industries, the technology and then another passion that a student might have. So that's it, let's move on to the second thing that we wanna talk about. Why uh, a person, a student would consider computer science as a career. Well, this might sound grandiose, but computer science rules the world. That's actually true. If you think back to that slide that said computer science is everywhere, and we talked about all the kinds of devices that are infused with some type of computer science, it really is all around us, much more so than ever in the past. In fact, if you look at job growth, and we're looking specifically here at STEM job growth, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. If you look at STEM job growth over the past six years, the blue bar at the top shows the aggregated cumulative job growth for all STEM occupations. And you can see, you, you can't tell exactly from the chart, but you can guess that that's somewhere around maybe 800,000, between 800 and 900,000 jobs. Um, and then if you look at the purple bars underneath, that's the disaggregation of that data, the individual pieces that make up all the STEM occupations. And by far and away, it's clear that the biggest one is computer science. Computer science, we can estimate based on where this bar shows up, makes up more than 600,000, maybe 650,000 new jobs in the United States in the past six years according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In fact, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 598,000, almost 600,000 new computer science jobs are set to be created in the 10 years between 2018 and 2028. We're right in the middle of that. Those jobs are being created right now. And the BLS believes that that will lead to over a million computer science job openings in 2024, just a little over two years from where we are now over a million computer science job openings that need to be filled by computer science graduates. In fact, in some circles, in some reports, at very high levels in our nation, that computer science worker shortage has sometimes been called a national crisis. National crisis can sound a little scary, but there are some other implications of this huge demand gap for computer science graduates. Now, this image makes it seem like one of those implications is financial, and it certainly is. We don't mean to imply that it's all about money. However, most colleges and universities measure opportunities for graduating students in two ways. One of those ways is placement. How many students who are graduating are able to secure a job in the, their field of study? And then the other is money, it's salary. You know, and that's based on supply and demand. How much are those graduates able to earn? You can see on this next slide, we're zooming in a little bit. We've been talking about computer scientists. We're zooming in to one specific kind of computer scientist, a software developer. Just as an example, just so we can talk about some hard numbers for a moment. You can see that the salary range for software developers in recent history is between 61K and 161K, with the median income being just over 100,000, right about 106,000, 105,000. I'll tell you, I looked this morning at the Bureau of Labor Statistics site, and this is just a tiny bit outdated. If you take software developers, QA analysts, quality, quality control, QC, QA, and you take software testers, and you kind of look at those as a group, the median income now that the BLS is showing is just over 110,000. So that salary continues to climb. 
So some good, pretty good arguments for why you should consider computer science as a career or why a person, why a student might consider computer science as a career. And software development was just one example of that. There's lots of different kinds of careers in computer science. If you're going to choose computer science, the next thing, the last thing that I want to spend a few minutes on is why you might consider Newmont College of Computer Science as your education to prepare you for that career in computer science. And really what it boils down to is a matter of focus. And we'll talk about focus in a couple of different ways as we move through the next part of the conversation. The first way I wanna talk about focus is from an institutional level. At a traditional college or university, it's very common to have a focus on research. And that's not a bad thing in and of itself. That's good, we need research into new techniques in computer science. However, one of the side effects of having a very high focus on research is that we might lose sight of some outcomes related to career success. These sentiments that you can see on the screen have, screen have been expressed by some noteworthy news organizations, and they indicate sometimes that employers are dissatisfied with graduates preparation for the workforce. Um, they're not ready in a variety of different ways, and we're going to talk some more about those ways coming up. This can be a potential side effect of an overfocus on research and not enough of a focus on students or preparing them for their future careers. Newmont is not a research institution, it is a student focused institution. That's intention is to prepare students well for their future careers in computer science so that they're able to begin contributing as quickly as possible or sometimes we joke that they hit the ground coding on day one. Some of the things I mentioned that the employers of computer science and information technology graduates say that they typically tend to lack, so that you're aware, are skills at communication, teamwork skills, collaboration, the ability to work together to solve problems and create products, experience with big projects, large scale development projects like they might encounter in industry an understanding of how the business that they're being hired to perform in and their computer science or information technology skill sets needs to intersect. And then sometimes the technologies they're aware of are, are outdated or antiquated and employers would prefer that they had more current and industry relevant now technologies. We think of them as our program outcomes and they inform the approach here at Newmont. The approach at Newmont is collaborative and it's very hands-on. We accomplish that hands-on approach through a project-based learning environment where the students are doing in order to learn. For example, they might be given a software development project and the requirements that drive what they're supposed to create, the vision that they should form in their head and then translate into that programming language medium. And then they're supposed to take those requirements and with partnering with their instructor, accomplish the learning objectives in the course as they build a major piece of software. Those project or design projects and the rest of our cur curriculum are designed with input from industry professionals. That input from industry professionals is received in a couple of different ways. The first, and for me, maybe the most notable, is the full-time faculty at Newmont are all 100% former successful industry professionals who have succeeded in their own careers prior to coming to Newmont. I've sometimes heard, and my, my parents are uh, public school teachers, and so I certainly hope that this is not offensive. Uh, they, they probably wouldn't love me saying this, but we may have heard at some point in our lives that those who can't do teach, I don't think that's true, but sometimes it still is saying, it's a saying that we change at Newmont into you can't, until you have done, you can't teach. Our faculty are required to have demonstrated success in their careers and a long history of experience in the field before they're allowed to come and teach the minds of those young students that we're entrusted with. In addition to that input from industry, we also partner with current industry professionals who um, give feedback on the curriculum, the projects, the technologies that are being used at Newmont on a regular basis, multiple times a year. They also help us make sure, in addition to the projects, that our technology is current for what's being used in industry and that it's in demand, that the students will be able to find 
uh, job placement and good salary with those technologies. Newmont's truly centered, student centered in a lot of different ways. The curriculum is a big one. I also just like to mention our student affairs department, sometimes called student services at other institutions. That department is made up of individuals who you might think of as uh, guidance or enrollment counselors, um, but with a lot more. They do a lot more than that. They, they're assigned specific students that they help mentor through their college experience. They'll communicate, collaborate, ask questions about, and help them solve problems related to their class schedule, sure. Uh, sometimes things in their, their uh, personal challenges that are keeping them from school, sometimes interpersonal relationship challenges that are interfering with school, whatever is needed to help those students succeed on their path to becoming a computer science professional. Another thing about Newmont that a lot of students enjoy if they come interested in computer science is that it's computer science all the time. And that all the time extends into some of our general education classes. I recently sat in a math class, a college algebra class with one of our math instructors and a group of students. And I just really enjoyed seeing the way that the math curriculum was delivered to the students. It was the concepts you'd expect in a college algebra class but they were constantly tied back to principles in computer science, numbering systems like binary, logic, uh, truth tables, all those kinds of things were tied together with the math concepts that were being presented, which for the students who were already interested in computer science helped that math come alive. So computer science all the time. And another big benefit for some of those students is that often they find their people at Newmont. Often the culture here around computer science is a culture that they're very comfortable in. You can see the uh, silhouettes of those superheroes there on your screen, and you may know the famous quote that uh, from, from a movie, we're all about that superhero lifestyle. At Newmont, we are all about that computer science lifestyle. And just to kind of give you an example, a quick peek into what that might look like, here are a few pictures from around the campus that are fairly recent um, that are not focused on the curriculum but instead the student life that sometimes surrounds computer science and the students who enjoy it. Another big benefit that I like to point out about Newmont College is that the bachelor's degree program can be completed and is designed to be completed in just three years. Now that, that is a big benefit, but if Newmont looks like a lot of fun based on the student life and the fact that the general education classes are tied into computer science, everything's computer science all the time, it might be tempting for a student to ask, why would I want to finish sooner? And the answer to that, at least in part, has something to do with money. It also has to do with quality of life and some other things as well. But let's start with the money because it's quantifiable easily. On average, graduates in computer science, and that includes software development and a host of other fields underneath computer science, earn an average starting salary of about $76,000 a year. So if you take that $76,000 a year and you look at this timeline that I put on the screen, on the bottom is a traditional timeline we might associate with a four-year university, where my first year I attend fall and winter semester and then I have summer off or spring and summer, however you look at it. And then the same thing in year two, year three, and year four. And at the end of year four, I'm ready to start my career. And if I graduate in one of these computer science disciplines, I'm likely to be earning somewhere in the neighborhood of $76,000 a year. Then if you compare that to the Newmont schedule up above, that continues year round with small breaks in between the quarter. It continues year round through the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter, and it's designed for students to attend that way to complete quickly. By the end of year three, your computer science graduates have already started earning in industry and are making an average of $76,000 a year, a year earlier than they might have in another situation, which is fantastic for student loans or for getting started in life or whatever it is that's needed. I just couldn't resist showing you a quick picture of one of our graduating classes. The students here in this picture are happy and smiling. Most of them, it's typical for us to have 70 to 85% of our graduating class have a job on the day that they graduate. They're about to start their new job. I also wanted to show you a couple of employers that typically hire students from Newmont. 
Google, Oracle, HP, 3M, Yahoo, some others you might recognize, Tesla. In fact, you'll see a specific student who went to Tesla in just a minute, a specific student who went to 3M in just a moment. Um, but just wanted to call those out for you. And then the last thing that I kind of want to end on is some examples of some students, because I talked about this earlier in the discussion, some examples of some students who graduated from Newmont and found a way to fuse their passion, their interest in technology with a passion industry interest outside of technology and make a successful, lucrative and fulfilling career for themselves. This particular student graduated and began a career using computer science to support cancer research. And then very differently, one of our other students, Josh, that you can see here on the screen, um, is using computer science to help analyze football for the University of Utah. Scott, the student that you can see, went to work for Tesla. I mentioned that a couple of slides ago. Scott really enjoys cars and was able to blend his passion for cars with his passion for computer science. And for Quan, went to 3M because he's really interested in healthcare and health information systems. I really love that part of computer science. And I think that's evolved over the years. It was the case many years ago that computer science meant computer science. Today, computer science supports an interest and passion in so many different, in so many different areas. So I, I feel like uh, we've had a minute to talk about computer science. We talked a little bit about the value of a career in computer science. And now we're just summarizing here a discussion of why Newmont might be a good option if you're considering or if you have a student who's considering a career in computer science. With that, I just want to wrap up and say thank you so much to everyone who attended or listened. And thanks to Lee and Bob for having me. All right, awesome. Yeah, we are going to go ahead and open this up now for the Q&A portion of our presentation. So if you have a question for Ryan, please uh, feel free to type that into the, the Q&A section. I'm also going to throw up a poll question. If you would like somebody to contact you about presenting similar information to your students, on computer science uh, careers and a little bit more about Newmont, please indicate so in the poll so that we know who to reach out to after this is over. Um, Ryan, this, this person wants to know about uh, Title IV funding and applying for a FAFSA to go to your school. Can you, um, can a student apply for FAFSA uh, to come to Newmont? Yes, that's a great question. I'm glad it was asked, thank you, yes. You certainly can use the federal application for student financial aid and Title IV funding to attend Newmont. All right, awesome. <clears throat> um, okay, the next question has to do with housing. Um, do you offer housing at Newmont if a student is, you know, outside of the Salt Lake City area? Yes, there are all kinds of housing options in the Salt Lake City area, both on and off campus. The on-campus housing is where the majority of our students live. Uh, and that's split up into several different buildings that are all just a few blocks apart right here in downtown Salt Lake City within walking distance of each other. There's also, I'll just mention quickly on that question, there's also public transportation that runs frequently and quickly between the different residences and the campus where classes are held. Great. Hey Ryan, this is Bob Martin. I got, a, uh, I got another question here. Is there an online component to the educational portion at Newmont or is it entirely in-person on, uh, on campus? It's a great question, Bob. Thanks for asking that. Um, we have found over the years at Newmont that our students' experience and their success in their careers is aided significantly by an in-person on-ground experience. And so our primary experience here at Newmont College is on-ground. Uh, certainly, like everyone else, during, during the last couple of years, we've experienced, experimented more than normal with some online classes, but we're very, very excited now at this point to be back on ground, and that's where we plan to be in the future. Uh, hey, Lee, before we, uh, we close this session, which is a pretty good podcast, before we close it down, anything you want to add to it? Um, I think I'm good. Now, what, uh, what we're going to do is outline a couple of logistical details. The first is, is that uh, Lee, Lee is going to be sending out specific contact information that will allow you to um, contact Newmont and contact Orion with any questions that, you, that may come up. Um, and we'll send that out with the recorded version of the session, which we're going to send out to all registrants. 
Uh, we're also going to place this session on our website, uh, www.imagine-america.org, with very specific download instructions. I find it very useful to go back and listen to these things a second time. I, there's so many nuanced uh, discussions that go on at, at, that you miss that I just urge you to, to take a second listen to it. And the second, the third, excuse me, is that uh, Lee is going to be doing a survey to each and every one of the registrants after this meeting. We want to get your feedback on what you think of the program, uh, what you think of uh, uh, what we think we should be doing. Are there some other programs that you would you would appreciate us us offering? Well, before closing, we really want to thank the participants, the education participants, the guidance counselors that joined us today, taking time out of their very busy schedule to carve out a little bit of time to to listen to today's. Very, very, very good presentation. We'd like to thank Ryan Cox for sharing with us today's presentation and encourage any and all of you to contact him directly about, about uh, information technology and more importantly, Newmont. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Lee Doubleday and myself, we wanna thank you again and hope you have a great day. Goodbye.